Welcome to today's Destination LoRaWAN webcast. We're about to get started in just a moment. Uh, we'll give attendees a few more seconds to join us. Hello, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. You have joined the Using LoRaWAN to Transform and Scale Smart Utilities webcast. I'm Ken Lynch, Vice President of Marketing at Senate, and I'll be your host for today's webcast event. Before we start, we've got a few housekeeping items uh, to remind you on how to maximize your experience during today's webcast. If you see that your video or audio is off or behind, pushing F5 on your keyboard will refresh your screen. There's also a toolbar at the bottom of your screen and pressing the help box will direct you to instructions on how you can solve any technical issues you might be having. Uh, on your webcast console, you'll also see a Q&A box. From here, you can submit questions throughout the webcast and our presenters will be uh, online to answer them. Uh, please don't wait until the end of the webcast to ask any questions. Our presenters will be able to respond to them via the chat function uh, during the, the presentation. And lastly, links to today's slide deck, along with some additional relevant materials are available to you in the webcast uh, resources list uh, online on your screen. Before we begin, we'd like to take just a few moments uh, to say thank you to the Destination Laura Wan uh, series sponsors who help make these webcasts possible. Thank you to MachineQ, a Comcast company, um, as our Destination Laura Wan Gold sponsor. And thank you to, to our two silver sponsors, Birds and Charter Communications. And now to get to today's topic, uh, this webinar will focus on Laura Wan in the smart utilities market. We have five uh, panelists today who will be presenting different use cases that demonstrate how LoRaWAN is benefiting, enabling and transforming various utility sectors. And just a little background on the market opportunity before our presenters get started. Uh, the global utility market, as noted here with statistics from Markets and Markets uh, research firm, uh, is experiencing pretty remarkable growth. Uh, in just the five year period between um, 2019 and 2024, the total market size is projected to nearly double to 53.8 billion US dollars. So pretty significant growth opportunity in this market. Uh, and this projection encompasses all utility types, including water, gas, and electric. In terms of adoption over the last few years, uh, Senate and other LoRa Alliance member companies have seen uh, water utilities in particular, uh, become early adopters of LoRaWAN AMI solutions for large-scale metering and infrastructure monitoring uh, projects. And during the same period, we've seen gas utilities launch a number of large-scale uh, pilots utilizing LoRaWAN for a combination of metering, uh, infrastructure monitoring, and some pretty interesting critical safety applications uh, that include leak detection and automatic shutoff valve solutions. Uh, and electric utilities are now starting to adopt lower land solutions for grid management and microgrid management, uh, and they're contributing to their overall market uh, growth opportunity as outlined here as well. In terms of, uh, of general use cases, uh, markets and markets has identified asset monitoring and management uh, and analytics as just a few of the leading applications uh, across uh, these various utilities, um, and each of these will be discussed to some degree by our panelists today. Our presenters uh, are going to detail uh, various aspects of the value proposition of LoRaWAN relative to their own solutions, but I did want to take uh, just a quick few uh, minutes to cover off the highlights of why LoRaWAN uh, is a leading technology choice for utility modernization and service delivery. Um, first of all, uh, of all LP WAN technologies on the market today, LoRaWAN supports the broadest range of use cases. Uh, this is supported by case studies and ROI examples that we see published um, seemingly daily, if not more frequently uh, into the market. Uh, and these ROI examples and case studies highlight specifically how LoRaWAN is more cost-effective, uh, more efficient, uh, and more flexible than a number of competing technologies in the marketplace. Uh, LoRaWAN is also an open, non-proprietary standard, um, and it offers extreme flexibility across the entire solution stack. Uh, the, in addition, the open nature of the protocol has attracted uh, over 500 member companies to the LoRa Alliance, which has become one of the fastest growing technology alliances of all time. 
Uh, LoRaWAN has also been proven to support massive and scaling use cases um, like those uh, that, are, that are in the utility market. Uh, and it offers a number of key features like long range communication, um, excellent device battery efficiency that supports over 10 years of life in the field in many cases, uh, strong built-in security and bi-directional communication, uh, just to name a few of the features that are, are required by utilities to deliver uh, uh, large scale uh, commercial applications. And by all accounts, LoRaWAN is the most widely deployed of all LPWAN technologies today. It's being used to connect millions of devices across a wide variety of commercial uh, use cases. So now I'd like to introduce you to today's presenters. Uh, we have an outstanding lineup of um, industry experts who are going to provide insight into how they're addressing some of the fast growing opportunities in the utility market. Uh, we've got Tim Gooderman of InfoSense, Shenyan Wee of Shenzhen Kaifa, Ali Husseini of Senra, Richard Perry of Lucy Zodion, and Norbert Herbert of Actility. And with that, I will hand it over to Tim from InfoSense to start the presentations. Take it away, Tim. So hi, I'm Tim Gitterman, the CEO and co-founder of InfoSense, and I'm a building systems engineer by trade, and my career has been devoted to solving many of the problems shown here. I firmly believe that these are some of society's most pressing challenges. And specifically, my clients have been these stakeholders, uh, building owners, operators, and utilities. And I have worked for them to make our buildings, our facilities, homes, and our grid more sustainable, more energy efficient, healthy, and resilient. And what I have experienced firsthand is that this group of stakeholders urgently need solutions to complex real world challenges. And the way this actually works in practice is that they turn to a wide variety of trusted business to business or B2B service providers to address these problems. And this group is wide. It includes everything from software platforms that serve billions of square feet of commercial real estate, all the way to middle market engineering firms that help facility managers and operators save energy and optimize processes. And this is where I've spent my career, working for these B2B service providers. So I know their workflows and their struggles and what makes them successful. And these are InfoSense's customers. They're the heroes the world needs now. But our heroes have a myriad of problems and the foundational challenges, they just can't get the data they need. They're looking for solutions to help them remotely monitor real-time data with wireless sensors. And as someone who personally lived this pain, I can assure you that when our customers look to the market for solutions, they really find that the present day options just don't meet their technical requirements and their workflows and data needs are just being ignored. Really, no one's designing solutions for them. And this leads them to try and do things themselves. And that leaves every single one of these businesses wasting money and wasting time doing the same heavy lifting just to get the data. And I want to be clear, for the vast majority of businesses, that's just impossible. They don't have the time, the skills, or the resources to become experts in technology that's beyond their core competency. And so without InfoSense, there's just this huge gap between sensors and actual data. And if we zoom in on this heavy lifting problem, it's really dramatic and painful. So if we put ourselves in the shoes of our hero companies, they're waking up every day to do their job, not to become experts in wireless sensors and networking and cloud infrastructure and more. They want to focus on what they do best, and they can't afford to waste money and time. And so that's what InfoSense does. We tackle all these issues head on, and we're turning everyday heroes into superheroes. So together with partners like Senate, we are leveraging LoRaWAN to make this happen. Because LoRa is not a buzzword. It's really revolutionary. It's a non-proprietary open ecosystem of long-range wireless sensors that have the superpowers the world needs today. We can send data for miles, punch through walls and floors, communicate reliably deep indoors and outdoors, operate free from local IT networks, and last for years on a single battery. And we at InfoSense make it all work like magic with software that provides clean, consistent, and actionable data. And our customers describe the experience of working with us as stress-free and enjoyable and easy. So they're willing to pay us to avoid those challenges and pain that come with deploying and managing massive data sets from the real world. And as you can see here, we rely on our trusted partner, Senate, to ensure that our customers' data is flowing from sensors to the cloud 24-7 with full visibility into everything that's happening in the field. So let's look at a real-world example. The utility in this example has spent hundreds of millions of dollars on a variety of initiatives to reduce load on their grid. 
And this is throughout Brooklyn and Queens in New York City. And the goal is to reduce and or eliminate certain upgrades to their grid infrastructure. And a key part of this spending was reducing demand through energy efficient lighting replacements. So every red dot here, that represents the thousands of customers that received free or reduced LED lights in their home or their business. And the utility tasked our customer, Guidehouse, which is a leading energy efficiency firm, to measure and verify the impacts of all these lighting retrofits. They needed to monitor exactly how and exactly when the customers use these new lights so the utility can understand what's called in the industry the load shape, which is the hour by hour trends of lighting usage by space type and by business type. Now, it would be infeasible to do this at every one of those thousands of sites. So Guidehouse selected a sample of about 200 of these homes and these business businesses to perform the monitoring. Now, doing this is not easy. I have spent my career doing this exact kind of work, so I really know the pain. And the typical way to do this is using data loggers, which are not connected and require engineers to physically install them on site, set them to record data, and then come back in six months to physically download that data and change the batteries. You know, but, but those old ways just don't cut it anymore. They need to have real-time assurances that the data is flowing. And to do this, they can't rely on each homes and each business's local IT network. Nobody wants that. It's really somewhere between impossible and a nightmare. And, and to top it off, they launched this whole project during COVID. So many of the customers did not want anyone entering their business or their home. So let's get into the details of what they actually did in the field. Our customer deployed Tectelic smart room sensors. These are LoRaWAN sensors that are shown here that monitor lighting on and off. And they also monitor temperature, humidity, movement, magnetometer, a number of other variables that weren't of primary interest for this study. And what they did was deploy about a thousand of these smart room sensors. So that averaged about three to 10 per site, depending on how many lights were needing to be monitored at each site. And they did deploy a Tectelic Kona micro gateway at each home. So about they only need, or each home or business, they needed one per site. Um, and interestingly, they also use uh, uh, something a partner of ours developed called a light pipe, which helps direct the, uh, the, the, the lighting on off signal closer to the light source. So if you can't get a sensor near the light, uh, the light bulb or the light fixture, this kind of helps channel that, that into it. Very cool adaptation to the smart room sensor. And then on the data side, which is really our core business, we help Guidehouse pull the data from our API, run all their an an analyses and algorithms, and then generate these load shapes by space type and by site type. And so what were the results? First, they eliminated 40% of the physical visits. They were able to recruit these utility customers and ask them if they would be willing to self-install. And InfoSense has made it all so easy, and so transparent that they were able to send these kits, gateways and sensors for self-installation. And because no one needed to hook up to local Wi-Fi or anything, all they needed to do was plug a gateway into the wall, put sensors near the lights with sticky 3M tape, and the data went from sensors to gateway to cloud via cell. And uh, it was very easy to do this. They didn't have to prior visit the sites, scope out the locations. They did not need any of the local IT, as I just said. And this gave them peace of mind. So Guidehouse now, instead of having to wait six months to hope the data was there, they had 24 seven visibility, plus all the tools that Senate and InfoSense provide to troubleshoot and remediate if anything was not working right. And finally, they have collected over 15 months of data at this point, collecting in every five minutes. Now, I wanna have some fun to wrap this up and show you some of, because the, this project has been very successful, but. I think sometimes the fun part or the interesting part that highlights how successful it is, is some of the troubleshooting examples. So um, this one example, it shows a picture of an actual customer uh, install. So they put this sensor in uh, near the light in this fixture in a bathroom and it's over a sink. And it was collecting lighting data on, off, on, off. That's essentially what the data looks like. And, um, and then all of a sudden something happened on this one day. And so the customers monitoring the data, they said it, in real time, they're like, hey, we're looking at the last week of data. It doesn't look good. What happened here? 
And the great thing about the Internet of Things or LoRa sensors is you get these multiple data points. So we could look at relative humidity. And even in this case, there's a magnetic switch on the sensor and something spiked. This is almost 100% humidity spike and something tripped the magnetic switch. And what we said was all remotely in a few minutes said, it looks like this thing fell into water. They confirmed with the customer, and that's exactly what happened. This was located over a sink. It somehow fell out of the fixture and fell into a sink. Now, that's unprecedented to have that kind of remote visibility into what's happening in an individual bathroom with an individual sensor with nobody even needing to contact the customer to see that, to, to find that out. We can just see it in the data. And then here's another fun, <coughs> excuse me, here's another fun one. Um, they were collecting data just in a, <coughs> excuse me, in a lighting fixture. And the lighting you know, was going on and off. This is just whenever they use this light in this fan fixture, it would trigger the on signal and they would collect how much time that ran for. But um, at some point after this point in, in October last year, the data just stopped working as well. They were getting intermittent data that the sensor just wasn't communicating as reliably. And so looking back, you could see the temperatures and these are in Celsius, well over 100 degrees, even with spikes to 110 degrees. And remember, the customers are self-installing these. And so this is kind of the Murphy's law. If it can happen, it will. They ask the customer, hey, can you please send a photo of where this light sensor is? And this is the photo they got back. This thing had been stuck in the fixture, literally on the light bulb. So the heat is just, you know, just baking this circuit board. Now, the great thing was it wasn't unsalvageable. They just simply asked the customer to take it and put it on the wall nearby and try their best to get, you know, the data on when that lighting center or when that light fixture was on and off and, uh, and things went along as normal. But again, another great example of the power of LoRa to, to really see deep into the data and troubleshoot and understand things and remotely. So that's our case study. That's our project. And uh, these are some of the results that you can read through here or download on the slides. And uh, I'll just turn it over to the next speaker. Hello, everyone. My name is Chen Yi Wu. I am an engineer from Kaifa Worldwide Team. Please allow me to briefly introduce our company. Kaifa is mainly engaged in the development, production, and sales of smart electric meters. In today's energy metering industry, we are facing the following challenges. First, collecting electric meter data through manual readings, time consuming and labulous. Second, the power consumption of the meter is less than five watt. Third, the transmission needs high security. Fourth, some ambulance situations such as the excess of power consumption and the power shift need immediately warn the power company to deal with. So we come the solution from an electri electri electricity meter project in Cotadeva. According to the standard Lorawan communication protocol, Kaifa built an electricity meter IoT network to transmit metering data. On the promise of meeting the data security and power consumption, it solved the problem of manual meter reading and supported the warning of abnormal power consumption. It brings the business value first with the help of the raw technology. The new smart meter is convenient to, for installation, deployment, and maintenance, which reduces the labor cost. Second, real time high security and accurate measurement reading is to reduce the financial loss of an energy company. Third, especially the COVID 19, we should reduce the follow of personal as far as possible. The, the wireless meter reading technology solved this problem, solved the problem of manual meter reading. More and more users choose to use the new smart meter. For abnormal, abnormal power consumption events are report, reported in real time, early warning the power safeguard and reduce the financial loss of power companies. In this map, this map is a certain area of Cote d'Ivoire, and we need to deploy 106 pieces of electric meter in this area. Uh, and uh, the communication is the distance is about two kilometers. Some, some installation environment is complex, you can see from the picture. And our customer needs uh, 
an electronic meter that uses wireless communication to report the collection date and uh, require low power consumption and uh, high security and high success of data acquisition. After comparing multiple schemes, we come to the following solution. With the lower one's high security and the strong signal penetration, low power consumption, high reporting success rate, Haifa built the LoRaWAN IoT network to solve this project. This IoT network, based on the white paper officially launched by the LoRaWAN Alliance and DLMS, the white paper standardized the network architecture, describe the network lawyer, answer the key questions which helps us build this network, and it provides it provides a protocol basis for the interconnection and interoperability for of LoRaWAN products of various manufacturers in the later period, and also facilitate network construction and maintenance. Okay, here comes the Kaifa solution. Uh, in this page, we, we can find that the original DMS message transmitted to the LoRa Mac lawyer in packets with the SSH safe fragment technology. And after being encrypted by the LoRa Mac lawyer key, it modulated and transmitted by the RFG being After being received by the gateway, it passed to the upper network survey. And the network survey used the same key to decrypt the original the original DMS data packets are combined by the SSHC and then sent it to the HES backend database for processing, thereby complete the safe and reliable data transmission from the meter to the cloud survey. This is a simple animation explained data transmission. First, the DMS original message, then fragment uh, encrypt. Uh, and send it to the network survey, the network survey decrypt, and the SSH is a gateway combined and send it to the HES backend. Uh, okay. And with the Laura One technology, our smart meter installation is very easy. First, install the gateway in a central location, and then install the meter with the gateway two kilometers around after power on, the meter will automatically access the network and optimize its parameters. Compared with the traditional meter installation, no addition on manpower cost. Our meter profile data is collected every half hour. Automatic, it's automatically push every two hours message, include the four pieces together to the network survey. Uh, from long-term tests, the data collection success rate, success rate exceeds 99%, and the data collection is more accurate than manual reading. So we can find it, it can replace manual meter reading. And uh, the abnormal events such as Overpower consumption and the electricity saved can be automatically reported within one minute. And the power company will be warned to deal with it in time to improve the power gate security and reduce the financial loss. Uh, at the last, we found something to be perfect. In the, the setting and the monitoring of LoRaWAN network and the SHC parameter have been added to the latest blue book of DMS. In order to realize the interconnection and the interoperability of LoRaWAN products between different manufacturers, it did officially formulate SCHC certification and the program standards. HiFi is willing to actively promote this progress. Okay, that's all. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Rawan Alliance for giving us this opportunity to showcase Kaifa's solution. We look forward to working together to make the greater progress with you. Thanks, Chingyi, for the wonderful introduction. 
Um, and thank you, Laura Alliance, uh, for putting the Destination LoRaWAN um, and inviting me uh, to speak today about the smart gas metering project we're doing in India, um, focused in the commercial and residential housing. Uh, I'm Ali Hosseini, the CEO and founder of Sinra. Uh, we're an IoT network operator in India, uh, as well as a solution provider um, globally. So uh, first I'll start off by just kind of giving you a little bit of view on the smart um, gas meter market. Um, it's expected to reach 3.1 billion US dollars by 2027. You might uh, want to actually kind of ask yourself, well, wow, that's a lot of money and why? So what I've done is taken uh, the liberty to kind of jot down some benefits of the smart gas meter, um, automated gas meters, uh, which will kind of give you some um, clear insight on uh, the numbers that you're seeing on this slide. So the benefits of automated gas meters, there's plenty out there, uh, but I've listed a few that I thought was important. Uh, the first one being the fact that you're able to reduce uh, labor intensive manual metering, uh, as well as uh, preventing the inaccuracies that come with it. Uh, in India, uh, normally uh, prior to the automated gas metering uh, solutions starting to be deployed, uh, we would actually have uh, people come into the resident's home uh, and being escorted to take screenshots with their phone of the actual meter. Um, and what they would do then is take that information back to their main office, where it would then be manual entries into a system, which eventually would generate the bills for the customers. Um, as you can think, the uh, intrusion into your privacy, especially during a pandemic, can be quite alarming. So what we've started to see is actually uh, rapid adoption of the automated gas metering solutions um, during the pandemic. Um, with the smart gas meters, you're also now able to improve the accuracies of your billing. So instead of having someone coming into your um, house or residence and uh, recording it manually, the data of the billing uh, consumption of the gas is automatically transmitted to a proper billing system, which then gets auto-generated uh, every month. And with better billing and accuracy, you get uh, better customer satisfaction. Um, so not only do the utility uh, care about their customers, but uh, in the commercial and residential space, the landlord has an obligation to make sure that their tenants are also satisfied. And in India, and I'm sure the same goes uh, in other parts of the world, um, the sometimes the landlord is the only customer directly to the utility where they're providing gas either directly from the utility or from a private uh, third party. Uh, and then they will supply the gas to into each individual floor. So if you have three um, tenants, what you could potentially see is a bill that the landlord cuts in thirds and just distributes the bill evenly to all of the tenants. And um, based on that, you can automatically assume that that's not fair, especially if one consumes more gas than the other. So with the automated gas metering, uh, the landlord is now also able to provide uh, more transparency on the gas consumption and is able to determine who's consuming what, uh, which then uh, provides the, a happy customer or in that, this case, uh, a happy uh, tenant. Um, the gas meters also, these smart gas meters come with uh, sensors that will be able to determine if there's an attempt of theft or tampering, uh, and that will uh, trigger alarms or notifications um, to the concerned party to be able to react quickly. So the revenue that um, one loses from someone trying to siphon the gas um, or tamper uh, with the meter readings that are recorded manually are no longer a problem. Um, and overall, it improves the working capital um, and increases visibility of your gas distribution if it's at the commercial residential society or at the entire smart city uh, gas distribution system. You're able to now know where the consumption and gas flow is being directed uh, and used more than other parts of the areas. So now that you know what the benefits of automated gas metering is, um, I want to try to explain to you why I think LoRaWAN is perfect fit for smart gas meters within the commercial and residential um, societies. 
So you've got tall buildings, right? These residentials or sky, skyscrapers sometimes, sky rises. Um, you could have 300 plus tenants uh, in these buildings. Um, what's perfect scenario is these gas meters are actually being installed at a pretty good height above ground. So it's uh, providing really great RF and line of sight to the Loroan infrastructure. Um, the infrastructure uh, is able to be installed on that same um, asset, these buildings where the gas meters are going, uh, which then provides a really nice location to get proper elevation uh, for the transmission of the gas uh, meter to the gateway. Uh, and you also reduce your costs of having to lease assets um, by taking advantage of the society buildings that are there. Um, the other positive thing is that these gateways, because it's lower and it has long, co long range coverage, um, the societies are typically no more than 200 meters uh, from one building to the other, uh, which means that this one gateway can cater to an entire society, uh, reducing your cost uh, from an infrastructure perspective. LoRaWAN is able to support a massive amount of devices streaming data at one time. Uh, and because you've got these sky rises with 300 plus tenants, uh, you can see that um, the data uh, is not only able to transmit successfully through the network, uh, but it's a benefit for the network operator or the solution provider to uh, bring on a bunch of connections onto uh, the network services that they're providing. Um, once that is up and running and everything is moving smoothly, you can work with the society um, to actually take advantage of other use cases and applications that LoRaWAN is a good fit for within that same society because the infrastructure is already there. So you're looking at smart building applications uh, and other things that can improve um, the quality of life for the residents in those societies. So the case study that I'll go through is uh, what we're doing in India specifically. Uh, we have a solution provider as a partner that is uh, the front end to the societies, which is their customers. They provide the gas meters, uh, they manufacture the smart gas meters themselves, and they have an analytics platform that they provide with billing and everything to the, um, the, the society owners. Um, they've put us under contract for about 11,400 gas meters to be connected across three cities, I believe, Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Ahmedabad, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and each of these societies contains uh, hundreds of uh, meters per location, around 300, 400 uh, and, or so. You'll see the, the image um, that I've got um, is actually uh, what it looks like. Um, it points directly to where the meter is located. The, the gas meter is located typically on the balconies of uh, these buildings. And you'll see the gas line that runs uh, up and down vertically uh, the side of the building. So each floor has its own gas meter. Um, and the nice thing about this is that the gas meter is uh, already smart. It's not a retrofit type of use case that we're working on. Although we do have a few um, buildings where they are taking as existing meters and making them smart with a retrofit uh, solution. So for us, we bring the LoRaWAN network and network services. Uh, we do site surveying to make sure that where we install the gateways providing the ideal connectivity. Um, and then what we are starting to find is literally one gateway um, will provide the connectivity across the entire society. So the reason we're so successful is that our partner is really uh, a great partner to work with. Uh, Ripple Metering is our customer in India. They're an India company. Um, they not only do gas meters, but they also do electricity and water metering. Um, but what's made it such a great partnership is that they are very receptive to feedback and they're really open for collaboration. So during the R&D phase, when they actually were developing their smart gas meter intelligence, they were communicating with us on module selections, the LoRaWAN standards, specifications, um, we were doing robust testing with their devices in our office uh, lab, where we have a coambic chamber to ensure that not only is the RF good, but it's compliant with the LoRaWAN specs for the Indian market. Um, and so that was a really great collaboration back and forth between the two parties, which um, then led into even um, seamless integrations with our LNS 
their application server and kind of this whole onboarding of the devices prior to deployment. So it worked really well. And, and what that resulted in was a reduced go to market and deployment timeline. To kind of give you some insight on how successful we were, I'll go through three more slides. Uh, one is to talk about the network performance. Um, we're able to provide an amazing quality of service. Um, and you can see based on this image, all of the gas meters to date that have been connecting to our network um, on all the channels that are available for the Indian ISM band shows an average less than 95 dBm. And that's really good signal if you um, are a network operator or know uh, anything about that aspect. Um, so the RF is great, the quality of service is great, um, and we've also been able to provide um, continual 100% uptime for the network connectivity by using our expertise and dual backhaul um, techniques, um, there's zero downtime and uh, continual success um, when it comes to transmission of uplinks and downlinks. The uh, packet success rate, as you can see, this is a screenshot from the network server. I've blurred out a few things that are confidential information, but what you will see is that all of the transmissions in this screenshot show a 100% success rate, packet success rate, which is an amazing achievement uh, from my network team and kudos to them for doing such a great job. Um, you'll also see um, high data rates as well, um, which, leads to longer battery life uh, and less interference with other devices out in the environment. Um, so overall, we're, you know, our network is doing fantastic. We've been doing deployments for over six months now with no failures. Um, and it's all thanks to not only our expertise in the, the network uh, engineers that went out to do the deployment of the infrastructure, but the collaboration with um, our partner uh, during that entire R&D and testing phase. Um, and finally, the last slide I've got, and then I'll pass it over to Richard, is um, the LoRaWAN's ability to handle a massive amount of transactions um, and our network server capabilities being a commercial grade quality network server, um, thanks to Senet, our partner in the US. Um, and so what you see on this depiction is the first meters that started to get deployed back in July in one society. And then on the right, you'll see uh, what it's currently doing as of uh, the 13th of October in this society from a transaction perspective. So what that means is we've got increase of uh, transactions, millions of transactions are uh, starting to transmit through our uh, network uh, daily. Um, and we're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of devices onboarded and coming online, um, making it an exponential growth uh, for um, our, our network uh, connectivity. So we've been really happy and, and blessed to have a great partner. It's been a great use case for us um, to deploy in the commercial residential. We're looking to continue to increase um, the 11,400 to more gas meters as they continue uh, to in expand their business in the India market. Um, so this is uh, from my end. Uh, with that, I'll pass it over to Richard. And thanks again for the time today. Thanks, Ali. Um, my name is Richard Perry. I'm company from a company called Lucy Zodian in the UK. And uh, I'm the head of business development for Lucy Zodian. Um, and we've been um, uh, looking at Laura Wan about five or six years now as part of our smart lighting strategy and um, we have been developing smart lighting uh, technologies for about 12 years in the UK and um, we came to a, a point in our journey where we decided that perhaps um, uh, proprietary protocols weren't the long-term uh, future for us as a company and the reason that came about was from customer demand really more than anything else. We found ourselves deploying large scale networks, sometimes you know over a hundred kilometers um, in breadth and uh, width uh, to, uh, to enable us to control smart lighting and leverage all the benefits for our customers. But what we found we couldn't do was add uh, other smart devices onto those networks because of the proprietary nature. So as we all know with LoRaWAN, 
um, the sort of collaborative and uh, open nature of the uh, of the architecture allows that development much uh, much easier for our customers. So our proprietary solution uh, is and still is 868 megahertz, and um, so we were very familiar with that. And over the sort of uh, development period of our new lighting uh, equipment, we looked at other um, smart lighting technology, Sigfox, weightless, some cellular stuff, etc. But we landed on LoRaWAN um, because of its combination of um, openness, um, the, the the commercial element, which is uh, you know relatively light compared to some of the competitors, and the uh, technical performance, you know the the ability to send small packets of data over a, a long range uh, with sort of good penetration as well. And also that, that sort of strength over noise, you know, the ability for the LoRaWAN signal to get over a noisy background. Was, you know, all those combination of, of factors helped us choose LoRaWAN. And it was, you know, relatively easy choice in the end because of the, the performance. So technically we found LoRaWAN uh, super, super good for us as a, as a development. And then what we found subsequently is this obviously large ecosystem of partners and developers within the network. And it's kind of, you know, for us, it's winning the race in IoT and smart cities in that, you know, there's such a huge well of resource to draw from that it makes, um, it makes our uh, interactions with our customers much easier uh, in terms of what we are able to deliver. And that is a, is a huge benefit to, uh, to us um, as a company. So um, street lighting uh, has uh, gone sort of synonymous really with smart cities for, for many of our customers, simply because it gives the city a powered infrastructure right in its heart. And uh, we're finding that, uh, of course, we uh, uh, deploy LoRaWAN control devices on every street light in some cities, but it also gives the, the street light itself as a powered um, piece of infrastructure with, a, with some altitude, gives us uh, the ability to hang other things onto that uh, particular network. So it might be a, a road surface temperature sensor or an air quality sensor or whatever it is. But we find that um, uh, the main purpose of street lighting, of course, is to provide safety uh, for the citizen and for the driver. Uh, but the opportunity that the street light uh, brings, it goes far beyond that uh, and allows us to use that street lighting infrastructure for a, a plethora of other devices. And I think we're seeing that cities and municipalities and local authorities are recognizing that and making um, you know, the strength of the street light as a as a, a as a place for placement is really important. So, um, what we've learned um, from the Laura One opportunity that raises up, and this is certainly learn learnings that we've taken for the last four or five years, is that Laura One is massively scalable, and uh, that's a huge benefit for it. You know, so we're not uh, restricted to. A typical city uh, perhaps uh, would have anywhere between 30 and 60,000 street lights within it. Sometimes, obviously, the larger cities have a lot more, but a typical sort of average size city would have that many street lights. So um, that would form the basis of uh, the street lighting network. But of course, Laura One is hugely scalable, and at the addition of gateways and um, and uh, and software support can mean that you can have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of devices all operating through the uh, the same network and it doesn't have to be uh, all led by one um, uh, commercial body of course the interoperability of LoRaWAN allows multiple vendors to sit on the same network so the municipality or city is never tied in to the the same company and what we've found more than anything is that uh, there's been a need to collaborate. And that's something that we've really enjoyed as a company. We've had to uh, stand side by side with many companies in order to deliver services to our customers. And that's something that perhaps we didn't do as much before, but something that we've really learned from. And it's a great thing to be able not just technically uh, to uh, understand how other people are uh, deploying networks, but it gives the um, it gives the local authority much more choice in who they deal with. And hopefully a lot of the time, some local partners are being used. And we see that as a, as a huge benefit as well. 
I don't need to talk about system capability, I don't I suppose, but uh, we're finding LoRa really strong as a, as a technology and um, or LoRa One, I should say, and, um, and sort of the end-to-end -end encrypted nature of it, as from a security perspective, really gives uh, gives us um, some heart when we're talking about making it as secure as possible. Um, Uh, so some of the things that we're getting involved with mostly uh, over and above uh, street lighting control and um, the big sort of ticket items for street lighting control are carbon reduction and energy reduction, of course, but also uh, the, the added benefits of monitoring the street lighting asset and also monitoring the power infrastructure that, that feeds those street lights, the electrical network and um, that's providing some really good uh, data through uh, for the users in order to reduce their costs and their maintenance costs, et cetera. So energy costs, carbon reduction, maintenance costs, they're the big ticket items for street lighting network deployment. But in addition to that, there's some health and safety uh, elements to it. So reducing traffic uh, speeds in and around schools, for example, monitoring air quality, again, in and around schools, uh, we get involved a lot in providing uh, electrical network um, uh, infrastructure for EV charging. Another arm of the company provides uh, provides that. Uh, but monitoring that EV charging and what that does is now possible on Laura One. That's something that we're, we're very interested in. Uh, we're uh, UK based for the most part, although we operate uh, in Europe and the Middle East as well. Um, but in Northern Europe, particularly, road surface temperature. Uh, for us, um, gritting and winter maintenance is a huge uh, burden on the uh, the taxpayer and local government. So, reducing the need to uh, to send out gritters and winter maintenance is something that a lot of authorities are focusing on at the moment. And Laura One's perfect for that. Small bits of data over a long range, and you know, over some clever software can really can really help. And then, as we move towards uh, carbon neutrality adaptive lighting is becoming more important that's light where you need it as a philosophy that's only putting light onto the road if there's likely or there is uh, traffic on there but that also applies to pedestrians uh, and road users not just about uh, traffic itself so uh, the, the way we end up going to market a lot of the time with with our, our products and services is by piloting and so we always encourage uh, you know, the proof of concept pilot if we, if, if we can. What we find is that it always proves that there's energy reduction, there's cost savings, uh, and the, uh, the breadth of what can be achieve, uh, achieved on a LoRa one becomes very, very transparent um, uh, you know, very quickly. So we always say, you know, start small, but most of all start because it's a, it's a real uh, winning philosophy and it has been for us. Um, and so in order to sort of summarize uh, what we've spoken about there, um, we find that LoRaWAN is deployed for us in, we're in a highways electrical field, uh, lighting and street lighting and road lighting uh, is often the anchor tenant for the deployment of a LoRaWAN. So we're seeing large scale LoRaWANs being deployed for uh, lighting alone and then other items being uh, added to it. And um, the uh, carbon reduction element of that is certainly the big drive, as we all know, uh, at, at the moment. And um, the open nature of key, and that's the name of our uh, LoRaWAN technology, and LoRaWAN itself just allows for some huge control and benefit for the uh, local authority. And when we talk about carbon reduction, Typically, um, when a local authority or city decides to alter their lighting strategy from traditional lighting to LED lighting and control, then they'd normally get around 60% saving with their lighting reduction. And then they might add another 15 to 20% via some smart control. So 80% of their original energy consumption can be reduced by a clever lighting strategy, which includes uh, the use in our case of using a LoRa one and some um, smart lighting. And then of course, on top of that, once the network's deployed, they can use it to leverage for things like waste management and air quality and flooding. So 
again, we're finding that it makes a lot of sense. Once our customers understand LoRaWAN and what it can do, then it becomes a, a very attractive proposition for them. Um, and uh, that's it for me. I'd like to hand over now to Norbert from Actility for, for his talk. And thank you, thank you for listening. Thank you, Richard. So my name is Norbert Herbert from Actility. I am a solution consultant there. And I am going to talk to you about energy optimization, the Actility's energy optimization solution. So if a company decides to uh, introduce an energy optimization solution, must probably what they want to achieve is to reduce energy bills, to increase energy efficiency, to reduce OPEX uh, spendings, or achieve a quicker return on, uh, return on investment. Uh, they may also uh, show some social uh, environmental responsibility and uh, comply to regulations. And how they can achieve that? Usually, uh, companies uh, can uh, do energy optimization by measuring as much data as possible and collecting as much uh, data about, energy about their energy uh, consumption as possible. Uh, so let's go through this uh, uh, queue of uh, tasks here. So first, they need to measure, for example, uh, the, the, the power consumption, the water consumption, the gas con uh, consumption, and any kind of energy consumption. Then they need to collect the data from these meters. The collected data needs to be stored in a database. Uh, the stored data has to be analyzed uh, and visualized somehow. Uh, and uh, if the data is visualized, then you can easily detect uh, abnormal energy consumptions. And uh, by analyzing the data or after analyzing the data, you can start optimizing the energy con consumptions and, and uh, make suggestions how to change uh, the, your operation so that you, you save energy, uh, energy cost and, and real energy. And finally, uh, your goal will be uh, reached, uh, you save money, and you comply to regulation. So we already have a large reference customer. We have many reference customers, but uh, the one I am going to talk about is uh, this one, uh, deep sea industrial zones. Uh, they are a large industrial infrastructure operator based in Vietnam, and they wanted to understand uh, what they spend uh, their energy budget for, uh, what are those uh, components of their infrastructure that consume most of the energy and how they can save uh, energy. The solution was built from three companies' uh, platforms. So sensors were, be, were provided by Adonis, uh, connectivity was uh, assured by Actility, and the application server was uh, provided by Opinum. So let's see what Adonis is offering or, or providing. We are using their two different devices from Adonis, uh, a pulse meter, an Adonis pulse meter, and an Adonis Modbus uh, slave device. So the, the pulse meter, the pulse meter collects pulses uh, from water meters, from gas meters, from electricity, meet, electricity meters, and from heat meters. Uh, integrating a meter or connecting a meter uh, to a LoRaWAN device or to a con communication device via pulses uh, is the most robust uh, and most easy way of integration because usually these meters are uh, generating passes and that uh, the more passes are generated, the more energy was consumed. And the number of count, count is every, every uh, pulse detection increases an internal counter of the device and the counter value is regularly reported to the backend. This is how that works. The Modbus interface of uh, uh, Adonis is actually a Modbus slave. So, this device can be considered as being a bridge between a wired Modbus system and a wireless LoRaWAN uh, platform. So it collects data uh, from electric pumps, from valves, 
where uh, it's not only collects data, but also can uh, support bidirectional communication. So it can control uh, the pumps and the valves uh, through a mode bus and a LoRaWAN uh, network. And uh, here you can see two examples. So a pulse meter and Adonis pulse meter connected to an Itron water meter. And on the right, you can see an Adonis uh, Lura one uh, uh, mode bus slave connected to a mode bus controller. So what activity is providing? What activity is providing is between the application server on the right and uh, the, the and devices on the left. So you can see there the gateways and a lot of one network server. Let me use my mouse here. So this is the network server we provided or ThinkPark Enterprise uh, lower one network server solution. Uh, plus ThinkPark X IoT flow, which is embedded in ThinkPark Enterprise. And this is a, a middleware between the network server and any kind of external application service. It provides lots of useful uh, features that uh, help uh, operators to interconnect the ThinkPack Enterprise Network Server with external application servers. So let's have a quicker look uh, what is inside ThinkPack X IoT Flow. So in uh, ThinkPack X IoT Flow has a feature called device drivers. So device drivers could be used to have messages sent by end devices decoded. So without using drivers, the messages sent by Adonis uh, devices would be nothing else but a sequence of bytes, what somehow has to be interpreted at the application side. So the application server requires extra effort to decode the messages. If you use uh, our drivers, then the application server will get decoded messages uh, in a JSON uh, format. It's, it's a text, uh, text file or a, a text document format what uh, the, the application server receives. Data processors are more advanced drivers. And uh, I, I could in a simple way say that uh, data processors are stateful drivers. And we also support cloud connectors uh, that uh, help uh, you easily connect to, uh, to well-known interfaces of uh, well-known cloud platforms like AWS, Microsoft Azure, and so on. Or we can use standard uh, interfaces or technologies like MQTT, AMQP, or simple H uh, HTTP or WebSocket. Uh, ThinkPack XIoT Flow also includes a component ThinkPack XIoT Core. Uh, ThinkPack X IoT Core uh, is an online database for uh, IoT devices. So uh, the, the IoT data can be stored uh, online on a DB and the application server can query that DB uh, through a REST API. And the whole platform uh, is deployed on top of Kafka queuing mechanism. Uh, what does it mean? It means that we uh, have Kafka queues and uh, all messages before being delivered are staying in a queue. So if the application server has a maintenance windows or just the connectivity between uh, ThinkPark and the external application server is broken, no messages uh, will be lost. All messages will stay in the queue until uh, the application server uh, will become available again, and will have a chance to consume those messages. Uh, this slide shows our existing ecosystem. So we have more than 150 uh, drivers deployed on our platform already, more than 15 connectors. Uh, a few of them are standard connectors like HTTP, MQTT, MQP, or WebSocket. Uh, the rest are standard interface to run on cloud platform like IBM Watson, uh, Azure IoT Hub, Amazon IoT, and so on. So a quick look about what Opinum is providing. So Opinum uh, provides a dashboard and visualizes the data and analyzes uh, the collected data. So this is a, a nice example, uh, presenting the data or visualizing the collected data uh, on several different chart types. Uh, as you can see, bar charts, uh, 
pi, pi diagrams, uh, all different scatter uh, diagrams, uh, all are supported. And in addition to that, what op Opinami uh, can do is uh, to show or detect correlation between data, but it is automatic detection of correlation. Here, what you can see on the, uh, what, what we visualize on this uh, diagram is that on, on the horizontal axis, uh, we see the, uh, the, the consumption in kilowatt hours and in the, on the vertical axis, uh, uh, we show the, uh, the cost of, of energy or the cost spent on energy. And uh, it's obvious that there must be some correlation uh, between the two, uh, two, two dimensions. And if you look at the purple data here, it clearly shows correlation, but uh, sometimes there is no correlation and you can also detect it here. Uh, if you look at the uh, green line here, the green uh, dots, the green dots do not show uh, any correlation. So there are two machines uh, that are monitored here. Uh, in one case, the energy con consumption was uh, so uh, so slow, uh, so small that uh, uh, there, we were not able to show any correlation between the cost uh, spent on energy and the energy consumption. In the other case, we can see the correlation. If we see the correlation, we can uh, do actions to uh, to achieve savings. Uh, this nice infographics here uh, shows how in time uh, the, the temperature of rooms are changing. So both the horizontal axis and the vertical axis uh, shows the time, but the horizontal axis uh, shows the time of the day, the vertical axis the day of the month. And you see the periodicity. You see that uh, on working days of the week, uh, the, the rectangles are uh, dark green. In other uh, cases, and out of work hours, work hours, the rectangles are light green. Uh, and you can easily see that uh, in ev on every Thursday, on every Thursday after uh, working hours, uh, the the rectangles remain. Uh, dark green, which means must probably uh, that uh, people are having overtime on Thursdays. So about the three companies uh, providing the solution, a few sentences about those uh, I would like to uh, tell you about. Uh, uh, who is Adonis? Adonis is a French uh, device maker company. They are one of the great names uh, they provide uh, very reliable uh, LoRaWAN uh, end devices, and they strongly contribute to the LoRaWAN ecosystem. Uh, Actility uh, is a French company too. Uh, the company was found, uh, founded uh, in the year 2010. We have 130 uh, employees or investors invested uh, more than 1 million euro uh, to activity and we operate large LoRaWAN networks. We have more than 50 public operators uh, uh, connected to our platform or powered by our platform. And uh, we power more than 500 uh, private network of large enterprises. So uh, we, we have uh, really, uh, great uh, experience in operating low powered wide, wide area network uh, uh, systems. And who are Opinam? Opinam is a Belgian uh, uh, solution provider or application provider. Their product is Opinam uh, Data Hub, uh, which is a data analytics platform specialized in, uh, in energy optimization. So thank you for your attention. So I hand over to uh, Ken from Senate uh, to, to continue uh, the, the presentation. Thank you, Norbert. And thank you to all of our Laura Lines members uh, who presented today. Um, we ask that you please take a few moments to learn about the great benefits that are available to Laura Lines members uh, by viewing the Laura Lines member brochure in the resources section on your screen. And we encourage you to come join the Laura, uh, Laura Wayne ecosystem. Here are just a few ways uh, the Laura Alliance um, and a membership uh, with the Laura Alliance can support you and your business. 
I'm not going to detail each of these here as the information is included in uh, today's PowerPoint deck and available uh, for download. And I'm sure the Laura Alliance representatives would be happy to discuss them with you at your convenience. And a final plug for a very exciting event uh, being hosted by the Laura Alliance. Uh, the Laura Wan World Expo is taking place next March in Paris. Uh, this event is open to the public uh, and we hope to see you there. Thank you again for joining today's webcast. It will be available on demand within 24 hours using the same link you used to join today. Uh, if you enjoyed this topic, please share it with your colleagues and on your networks and join us again soon for the next Destination LoRaWAN webinar. And with that, we're going to sign off. Thank you again and have a great day, everyone.